content with killing pensioners, not content with destroying the rental market for properties, not content with taxing you to the point where people are literally fleeing from the country, we now hear that Downing Street have admitted to the fact that Keir Starmer broke parliamentary rules by not declaring clothes being bought for him uh, and his wife by Lord Arley, who has decided to dress and clothe them. Why does Lord Arley need to clothe them? I mean, do they normally shop at a jumble sale or something? I mean, why isn't Keir Starmer... Hasn't he got about 10 million quid in the bank? I mean, does Lord Arley want to clothe me? I'll, I will accept clothing. I love clothing. Can I have some clothing, please? I mean, it's bizarre to me that someone's buying him his clothes for him. I mean, what, what was he doing? Was he found, like, wandering naked around Azos or something? You know, was he found curled up in the corner of Primark? I really don't understand why he needs to have clothes bought for him. But there we go. And why his wife needs clothes bought for her. It does seem rather bizarre, if you ask me. But yes, apparently it was an oversight, according to the Times, breached parliamentary rules by failing to declare that a multi-millionaire businessman and party donor bought high-end clothes for his wife, Victoria. He faces an investigation after neglecting to disclose that Lord Arley, a Labour peer, I used to work for Lord Arley, so I know a bit about him, uh, covered the cost of a personal shopper clothes and alterations for Lady Starmer. Former chairman of the online fashion retailer ASOS, uh, his wealth is estimated at £200 million. He's Starmer's biggest personal donor. Apparently he's given the Labour leader £18,685 worth of work clothes and several pairs of glasses. He spent £20,000 on accommodation for Keir Starmer during the election and a similar sum on private office costs. So that's knocking on 60 grand so far. Those were declared. Again, bizarre that they would need clothing bought by a donor, but fair enough. What a man of the people. 20 grand's worth of clothes. A man of the people indeed. <laughs> Those were declared. I mean, at least he didn't take the money from pensioners in order to buy his clothes. So that's something. The clothes given to Lady Starmer uh, were thought uh, after her husband entered Downing Street in July weren't declared. You've got 28 days to declare this stuff. They weren't declared. She received deliveries around the time Ali was embroiled in the cash for access row. So, uh, I mean, not very bright, is it? So there's a cash for access row with Lord Ali and at the time, <laughs> these lovely deliveries arrive of all these lovely shiny clothes and they just accept them. Not very intelligent. Sunday Times has revealed that uh, had a number 10 security pass, this is Lord Arley, and used it to entertain donors. Um, and apparently Labour headquarters helped to organise the delivery of the goods for Lady Starmer. Details of the arrangement were known only to a tiny circle of trusted advisers. Not very bright advisers. The disclosures are awkward for Keir Starmer, who has vowed to clean up politics, root out cronyism, and was once described by Lisa Nandy as Mr Rules. Yet, of course, remember the hysteria in Parliament when Boris Johnson, who also was a corrupt buffoon, let's be honest, but do you remember the hysteria from Keir Starmer and the piousness when... Uh, Boris Johnson hadn't declared that wallpaper that he'd been given and how much they lost it at that. And in, in fairness to Boris Johnson, whom you know I can't stand, but he never actually sold himself as someone who was anything other than a corrupt, dishonest buffoon. I mean, that was one of his attractions for uh, people who voted for him. But Keir Starmer set himself up, didn't he, at this higher moral level. He set himself up as being this, this cut above this corruption and this seediness of politics. So it seems rather bizarre and, dare I say, extremely stupid to have accepted all of this stuff. And they're not declared it, you moron. Unbelievable. Um, in fact, actually, we refer to my little phone down here. Somewhere... Uh, and let's go to my bookmarks. I bookmarked exactly what Keir Starmer said in Parliament. Um, the Prime Minister will be aware, this is to Boris Johnson at the time, 
that he is required to declare any benefits that relate to his political activities, including loans or credit arrangements, within 28 days. Then he was interrupted. 28 days, Prime Minister, yes. He will know that any donation must be recorded in the register of members' interests and that under the law, any donation of over £500 to a political party must be registered and declared. So the rules are very clear. The Electoral Commission now thinks there are reasonable grounds to suspect that an offence or offences may have occurred. That is incredibly serious. The words of Keir Starmer incredibly serious when you accept a donation that is not declared within 28 days. That would be the incredibly serious thing that your office has now admitted that you did yourself. So, is he corrupt, stupid, hypocrite, all three? Or just was he so hell-bent on being an authoritarian psychopath in some of the rules and regulations that he's been bringing in, like, you know, smoking in pub gardens or, you know, don't you dare look at an advert of a burger because, you know, you might gain seven stone. Uh, do you think that that was the reason why he forgot that his wife's sparkly new evening gown that she appeared in on the steps of Downing Street wasn't actually bought by him? Maybe. I don't know. But it just goes to show they are all absolutely, completely and utterly rotten to the core. All of them. Absolutely all of them. And if you voted Labour and you thought, well, this lot will be better, good luck with that one. I'd love to know your reaction to that. 0344 1000 is the number to call if you'd like to react to that one. Uh, by the way, later in the programme, we're going to be giving uh, some airtime, a really important interview. This is a story that has been ignored. Barely any news outlets have covered the horrific latest round of grooming gang convictions which have taken place in Rotherham. Now, these are offences between 1997 and 2013. And a gang of men of Pakistani Muslim origin have been now sentenced to somewhere in the region of 100 years between them for the horrific grooming and rape of underage girls in Rotherham. Uh, some of them date back well over 20 years and the conviction has just taken place, the sentencing has just taken place. Um, not very many places have covered this. And thank you to Angela and a couple of others on, on Twitter who have because you know I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about this story because I feel like this is something that needs to be spoken about. This is something that is still going on. This is something that we should all be discussing. So later on, Maggie Oliver, she's the campaigner. She lost everything as a former detective constable with the Greater Manchester Police. She will be talking to me live about her reaction to these sentences, why it's taken so long, bearing in mind that the last sentence, the last offence, rather, is alleged to have occurred. Well, it did occur. It's not alleged anymore because they've been found guilty. In 2013, why has it taken so long for these victims to get justice? And the bravery of some of those victims having to get up in court and face their accusers and give victim impact statements is beyond belief. And this is a story we must keep talking about because this is still happening. So we will do that in about an hour and a half uh, towards the end of the programme. So uh, do make sure you stay with us for that. 0344 499 1000 though if you want to join the conversation on anything. Of course we are on X as well. Um, Christo underscore radio if you want to tweet me, tweet the show at Talk TV. I don't know why I'm being so casual about that. Tweet me. Is it tweeting even anymore? I don't know. Oh, it's seven men, not six men. Seven men in total. So it was uh, uh, more men than I thought in that story. Awful, awful, awful story. I'm not surprised Keir Starmer broke parliamentary rules, says Peter. He seems to have broken every rule in the book since becoming Prime Minister ten weeks ago. Well, I'd say killing pensioners is quite an important rule that he's broken. Wouldn't you? I mean, literally. I don't mean to laugh. I'm not laughing at the fact that he's killing pensioners. I'm laughing at the fact that he just seemingly doesn't care. 
I don't want him anywhere near Russian missiles, thanks, or the missiles going to Russia. I'm surprised he's not firing them now out the garden of number 10. Can you imagine him on bonfire night? That's coming up in a few weeks' time, isn't it? With the cacophony of loud bangs that we're going to have for the next couple of months, which is going to be really annoying. I mean, you won't ban them, will he? Because he's probably going to be firing missiles uh, off the roof terrace of 10 Downing Street towards Moscow. He, he, I think he's a dictator. I think he's absolutely insane. Uh, Jane says, Starmer, nothing to see here. No wallpaper was involved. Well, look, he was right to call Boris Johnson to account, but if you're going to make yourself the moral arbiter of what is right and wrong when it comes to rules, well, I would suggest not being so stupid as to break the rules within 10 weeks of becoming Prime Minister. The same rules. The same rules. I honestly think he was so caught up with just imprisoning people who might have said a couple of hurty words online or trying to think of ways in which he could shaft pensioners, or giving away billions of our money to either unions or abroad, it simply slipped his mind that his wife was in a brand new evening gown. Or seven. He just, he just forgot. What, I, I tell you what he was doing, he's fingering through his own wardrobe of £20,000 worth of new clothes. That's what he was doing. Yeah, you know, he was holding them up against himself in the mirror and he thought, oh, I'm, I'm, what's going, I'm not even going to look in her wardrobe. And before he knew it, this happened. It can happen to the best of us, can't, can't it? You know, all these new clothes that arrived, none of us knew where they came from. It can happen to the best of us. He's such a man of the people, isn't he?